single droplet of water can tell a personal story, a veritable running biography of your household's daily habits. Whatever spurts from your spigot or spews from your hose runs along the pavement and takes with it all the residue of your life. Your car's motor oil, your flower garden's fertilizer, your dog's refuse, your urban lifestyle suspended in solution and running through the streets, into the storm drains, on a journey to the Santa Monica Bay. Well, urban runoff we often call urban slobber. It's basically all the pollutants that end up on your streets, in your yards, the urban environment that washes down into our storm drains and into our creeks and into our bay. The city of Santa Monica has been at the cutting edge and leading the state in installing environmentally responsible projects to deal with urban runoff pollution. In short, what gets left on the pavement ends up on your beach. Urban runoff is the single greatest source of pollution to the beaches and near shore waters of the Santa Monica Bay. And when water runs down your driveway, this map of the Santa Monica watershed boundaries shows just where its journey will end. Do you know which beach is yours? Where's my beach? What do you mean by that? If you take Montana straight down. My beach is where I can go and swim. The beach I go to and sit on and get a tan. <laughs> west of Montana. Where's my beach? Where's my beach? Where's your beach? Your beach is that part of the shoreline that absorbs all the urban runoff that comes from your household. For example, if you live in the 90403 zip code, then polluted water from your household reaches the beach through the Wilshire storm drain. If you live in 90402, then your beach is right smack in front of the Montana storm drain. No matter where you live, you impact a beach. 325,000 gallons of runoff flow through the storm drain system each day, and that's just during the dry season. From a human health perspective, a lot of bacteria and fecal matter gets washed down to our beaches that obviously in Santa Monica we have thousands and thousands of beachgoers every year and so they're being exposed to this fecal matter that is being washed into our ocean. From a marine life perspective, obviously heavy metals that get pushed down to the bay and other pollutants. Motor oil is just hydrocarbons and so that makes its way down to the aquatic environment. Those all can impact marine life. And you are what you eat. What gets into the fish can end up transferred to the people who catch and eat those fish. People really have to um, be cognizant of what they're eating and what contaminants it might have in them. And the city of Santa Monica has put in a number of what we call diversions and so instead of having the untreated stormwater and urban runoff go right into the bay, it actually gets diverted to a treatment facility and so the levels of pollution are much decreased. What the city of Santa Monica has is a long-term a program to outfit all of their storm drain outlets with some sort of treatment system. In April 2006, the City of Santa Monica published a watershed management plan aimed at restoring a healthier balance between the urban and the natural environments by reducing the pollution in urban runoff, reducing urban flooding, and increasing water conservation, recreational opportunities, open space, and wildlife and marine habitats. Ambitious to say the least, the plan may be the first in the nation to address the complete range of pollutants carried to coastal waters by both dry and wet weather runoff. We're treating the water and we're keeping that polluted water from getting into Santa Monica Bay. The city's storm drains already direct the runoff flow. Filtration devices installed in those drains can filter trash from the runoff before it hits the bay or divert polluted water away from the bay altogether. Our Smurf facility, which we installed back in 2001, is treating urban runoff from the pier and the Pico Kenner storm drains. The Smurf, or Santa Monica Urban Runoff Recycling Facility, actually harvests urban runoff and redirects the treated water back to the city for non-drinking purposes. 
Bicknell is Santa Monica's first ever green street. The angle of the gutters, even the pavement itself, drives stormwater to filter back into the ground and replenish the groundwater. First the water can pass over this pervious concrete. So the parking lane on both sides of the street is made of pervious concrete. That means water soaks right through to the soil below. It doesn't run off. Water that does not make it through there, because of the slope, it, it flows to the gutter, which is impermeable concrete, enters a catch basin, which we have right here, and it actually has a filter inside, so it can filter out debris, and it goes into a subsurface chamber, which is underneath the pervious concrete lanes. And you can actually see where the where the chambers are based on these observation ports that you see in concrete with caps. Those chambers are concave, fill up with water and let the water percolate into the ground. If the water doesn't go through the pervious concrete, it makes a right turn, it can go through the curb opening, passes under this walk plate so no one trips, and enters our depressed parkway. Water can pond here, hydrating the plants or, once again, percolating back into the ground. And if this area gets full of water, and ponds up to a higher level, we have an overflow port. So the water can actually go into there and actually then go into the chambers which we described earlier. And if everything fills up, then no more water can enter and it'll continue in the gutter and go to the next location where it can do the same thing and repeat it over and over again. And by the time you get to the end of the block, there will be no water exiting the street and going into the bay. Oh yeah, behind me, as you can see, is the Montana Storm Drain Outlet. So that's where urban runoff will flow out of the storm drain and flows to Santa Monica Bay. As you can see now, there is standing water there. So what that means is, even though it's not raining, there's dry weather runoff that's flowing through the system and is ponding in the beach. What we'll do is we'll eliminate that standing water during the dry weather period. So you won't see any of that polluted water. There won't be a chance for little kids to go and jump in the water and get sick. Between 2006 and 2008, in a massive construction project, the city installed a treatment system that would filter out 100% of all pollution from dry weather flows and roughly 80% of wet weather flows. On Ocean, at the intersections of Wilshire and Montana, workers dug 50 feet into the ground, punched their way into the existing 72-inch storm drains, and at each site installed a three-story high, 25-foot diameter continuous deflection separation, or CDS unit. If we look over here, you can see where they've broken out the asphalt, and the extent of the excavation is going to be out approximately to this area here, which is roughly the center of Ocean Avenue. Down in the hole here, you can see these steel plates they put in place to support the excavation. And so once they place the steel plate, they can begin digging out so they can then connect in with the existing storm drain. Now when you're connecting in with the storm drain, you have to be careful because you don't want to break the storm drain. When the storm drain was originally placed down there, um, they encased it in concrete. And so they don't know how thick that concrete is. And so it's a really delicate process to break the concrete but without breaking the pipe. Once the excavation is complete, the team assembles the massive concrete sections of the CDS unit inside the hole. A continuous deflection separation unit works like this. During both the dry and the rainy seasons, runoff water enters the unit's diversion chamber through the existing storm drain. A conduit guides the runoff into the screening separation chamber. The natural flow of the water creates a vortex that spins all the floatables and most suspended solids to the center of the separation chamber. A screen allows the clean water to flow out of the chamber while trapping debris inside. 
trash and suspended solids settled to the bottom of the chamber, where they remain until removed. So you can see here we have the inflow sampling well, and what we can do at this point is take a sample of the water coming into the CDS unit. Now if you look at the metal vault over here, this is where the unit actually sits. Now this opens up for the vault for the CDS unit to be cleaned and things like that, all the debris gets removed. And if you look over here, we also have the outflow sampling unit. So we can take a sample of the water coming in, a sample of the water going out, and determine the effectiveness of the unit. During the dry season, the system pumps all the treated water at a rate of up to 450 gallons per minute through the sanitary sewer to the Hyperion treatment plant in Playa del Rey for further treatment. In the low flow times, the water actually doesn't even ever make it to the beach. Stormwater runoff, treated up to 29,000 gallons per minute, is returned to the storm drain and flows into the bay without all the floating trash, sediment, oil and grease. Even when it's raining, some water will get treatment, but it will not be diverted to the sanitary sewer because there's just too much of it during a rain event. So the city of Santa Monica has had a goal to put in treatment systems at all of our outflows to the ocean, wherever they may be around the city. Today we've been very successful, but certainly along the coast here of Santa Monica Bay, we've put outlets, either ourselves, the city of Los Angeles, or the county of LA, have put in diversions or other treatment systems to remove urban runoff during the dry season and actually to treat it during the wet season. The Montana site CDS unit has been filtering away since 2007 and Wilshire since 2008. We're proud to say that during dry weather periods year round, no runoff is getting to the ocean, assuming all of our systems are working properly. I think we are seeing some improvements. Definitely the catch basins and the full capture devices that are being put in in response to the TMDLs, the trash TMDLs, um, there are definitely some improvements there. TMDL means total maximum daily load. It's a measure of any given pollutant that can get into a water body without ruining that water's beneficial uses. For trash, the maximum daily load is zero, and the best defense in the urban runoff battle is stopping trash at its source, you. If we want to live here and continue this, you know, beautiful area that we live in and maintain the, the beauty, we need to really work together to get the beaches cleaned up. While the city of Santa Monica filters urban runoff from the storm drains, you can do your part by making just a few changes at home. For example, don't wash your car in your driveway. People should really remember to go to a car wash because they have systems to collect that runoff and to clean it in some way. And um, if you have to wash it at home, you know, wash it over a grassy area so that it can actually infiltrate into the ground. Don't hose down your sidewalk or overwater your lawn. Minimize or eliminate fertilizer. Install sprinkler systems that operate on timers. You may even save some money on your water bill. Make sure your sprinklers are actually aimed at the grass, not the sidewalk, and pick up after the dog. These are just a few little changes in your waterborne urban lifestyle that can help make your beach a cleaner, healthier place to enjoy for generations to come.